This is the CEO of Uber, who has a few thoughts on Tesla and full self-driving. Just to be clear, the CEO of a company likely to be put out of business by Tesla Robotaxis. Listen, I think I think Elon eventually will get to viable scale, but for the next five years, I bet on Waymo, and we are betting on. I'll say this: I don't want to. So wow, betting on Waymo now. In case you guys don't know, there's already, give or take, roughly 7 million Tesla vehicles on roads that in the future will be capable of operating fully autonomously with a software update. They're already at scale. Scale is not the problem. Solving autonomy is the problem, which is a software issue. Something that every one of those vehicles can run with an over-the-air update. This is important. Tesla's already at scale. I'm going to get into an autonomous Tesla in the next five years. I'm going to let somebody else can test that out. I'm not going to be an early adopter of that FSD's one. FSD's getting pretty yeah. good. Have you yeah? used it recently? I have not used it's it recently. It's really good. Yeah? All right. Yeah. All it's right. really good. Now, it there we go. Some honesty here. CEO of Uber, FSD is really good. Also, a genuine question there. Have you actually used it recently? And the response was no. It is really good. It's improving at a dramatic rate. And it's actually nice to hear somebody leading a company that will be going bankrupt as a result of FSD's continual improvement. Accurately describing how good it is, how capable it is. Again, it, it's it, the, for example, the cost of a solid state LiDAR now is $500, $600, right? So why wouldn't you put that uh, into your sensor stack? It's not that expensive. So there's two answers to this question. One, 500 bucks is 500 bucks. But two, more importantly, it's a crutch. And three, you get mixed messages. What do you rely on when LiDAR says one thing, camera say another thing, radar says a third thing. Tesla encountered this issue in the past. The strongest signal, no pun intended, for capability and confidence in your autonomous software is the deletion of sensors. Remember, a billion plus examples of a dual camera based system driving vehicles fairly safely already exist on Earth. They're called humans. And for years, Musk has warned, rightly so, that those reliant upon LiDAR are doomed. They are. So that's the answer to the question why you wouldn't put in LiDAR. There's three reasons. One, it is an expense. Two, it's a crutch. And three, it's unnecessary. Uh, and for a fully self-driving specialized auto, I think that makes a lot of sense to me. Now, Elon has accomplished the unimaginable many, many, many times. So I wouldn't bet against them. Yeah, I don't know. This is and I've got to give credit where it's due again. At least the Uber CEO is acknowledging, look, why wouldn't you put light up? But hey, that being said, Elon has done the impossible many times, so I wouldn't bet against him. Exactly. This is always, you know, my, my secret dream for you, I, you know, obviously you should stay at Uber as long as you want. When you're done with that, I actually do think you should run Tesla because I think you would be, just as you've done Uber, you'd be willing to make some of the sort of easy compromises, like just put a $500 freaking LiDAR on the thing and we'd go much, much faster. These two guys just don't get it, do they? Let me expose Tesla's secret autonomy master plan. One, scale a massive, gigantic, fuck off, huge fleet of vehicles on roads, millions of them, while simultaneously collecting data and having paying customers train the software to get better. Then, once the problem solved, autonomy solved, bam, over the air software update, the fleet awakens. This is massive scale and a generalized solution. This is how Tesla wins over the long term. The company that crosses the finish line first, e.g., has an extremely capable piece of autonomous software that is scaled across a fleet of millions of vehicles, and it's a generalized solution, e.g. Your vehicles know how to drive on Earth, not in a specific tiny pocket of one fraction of a tiny suburb in a single city, but on Earth. You can pick them up, drop them anywhere, they'll know how to drive. The company that gets there first, crosses that finish line, wins. It's utterly irrelevant. Who appears to have a slight lead as measured by the number of autonomous rides taking place prior to then? The end destination, massive scale, generalized solution, that's what matters. That's the answer to the question. Short-term, short-sighted thinking about why not put a LiDAR and just, you know, speed things up. It doesn't matter about between now and then. All that matters is who crosses the finish line first. And no one else is even in the race. It looks like they are. People get the misconception. Oh, look, see, Waymo's ahead. Tesla's still on the starting blocks. Doesn't matter. Tesla's going to cross the finish line first. And the reason I'm underscoring this point is people don't get it. If you read between the lines, massive opportunity. Still not recognized widely. Why didn't Tesla just put LiDARs? I don't understand. It wouldn't cost that much. So anyway, I, what do you think I have about a full-time job and I'm very happy with it. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Well, the Tesla board is listening. Just keep this guy in mind. That's all I'm I don't know if the Tesla board listens to you two. <laughs> Good That's point. That's true. I Fair. made too this, many kind We're jokes. opening up the board meeting with an episode of Hard Fork, everybody. <laughs> they can learn a lot from this show. What's your best guess for when, say, 50% of Uber rides in the U.S. will be autonomous? I say close to uh, 8 to 10 years is my best guess, but I am sure that'll be wrong. Well, I appreciate the humility there. I suspect it's going to be a lot sooner than that. 
I almost expected a nervous chuckle from the Uber CEO. Again, let's just say that he's wrong. What happens to Uber in a world where a company like Tesla doesn't have to pay drivers to do the same job? Uber does not have a cost structure that can compete with that. They just can't rip. And while we're on the subject of Tesla's so-called competition, and yes, Uber is Tesla's so-called competition, not yet, but when they solve autonomy, rest in peace Uber, Lyft, and so on. Press F in the chat for Ford. Mid-2022, Ford CEO Jim Farley makes a grave mistake in calling out Elon Musk. We're really on a mission at Ford to lead an electric and digital revolution for many, not few. And I have to say, the shining light for us at Ford is this beautiful lightning made right down the road in Dearborn, right here in the state of Michigan, already the leader of all EV pickup trucks in our industry in the United States. Take that, Elon Musk. A few moments later. Ford F-150 Lightning plant to be idled from November until 2025. Hmm, wonder why they'd be doing that. Back in January, the Blue Oval confirmed that production of the 2024 Ford F-150 Lightning would be cut in half as demand for all electric vehicles in general began to stabilise after a rapid start. A few months later, Ford also trimmed its workforce at the same plant shifting some to other facilities and offering others retirement packages, which by the way, I mean, I call this stuff, right? Legacy auto companies are all fucked. They're going bankrupt. There's going to be closures, layoffs, plants shutting down, mergers, acquisitions, partnerships, and then bankruptcy filings. Previously, production of the 2025 Ford F-150 Lightning was slated to begin in November, but now it seems as if the automaker will instead idle assembly lines for some time. According to Automotive News, Ford will idle production of the Ford F-150 Lightning at the facility for seven weeks, starting at the end of the day on November 15th, about two weeks from now, and resuming on January 6th, a pause that includes the traditional week-long holiday break. The move comes amid slower-than-expected demand for the EV pickup. Now, in case you guys don't know, the F-150, the entire brand, is usually, give or take, roughly the best-selling vehicle in the US, year after year after year, decade after decade after decade. It's a mainstay. I actually thought Ford had really done well getting this vehicle, an electric version of it, first to market, beat the Cybertruck by quite a margin, although they are losing, what was the last time I checked, like 60 plus thousand dollars per Lightning sold, so yeah, there's that. But hey, I thought at least they've got a start. They can leverage this brand, loyal consumers, sell a bunch, should do okay, right? Well, apparently not. And Ford has already notified its suppliers of the newly adjusted production schedule. So imagine this, transition to EVs is urgent. And Ford, their flagship electric vehicle, the electric F-150, the F-150 Lightning, yeah, let's stop making them for seven weeks. <laughs> Bro. By the way, the Cybertruck is already massively outselling the F-150 Lightning and basically every other electric pickup truck combined in the United States. Awkward, considering it is a drawing that my three-year-old child could make and or a doorstop on wheels. Slash the second ugliest thing I've ever seen in my life. The first, of course, being my girlfriend. We continue to adjust production for an optimal... <laughs> an optimal... <laughs> this is shit so funny, bro. For an optimal mix of sales growth and profitability. Ford said in a statement, marking the latest instance in which we've seen production of the F-150 Lightning trimmed back from expected levels. In addition to these planned pauses, the automaker also stopped Ford F-150 Lightning production earlier this year after issuing a stop sale over an undisclosed quality issue. That process took nine weeks to rectify, after which production resumed. Despite this latest production cut, the Ford F-150 Lightning continues to enjoy sales increases, most recently posting an 86% year-over-year gain through the first nine months of the year at a whopping 22,807 units. The Lightning did concede the crown of the best-selling EV pickup in the US to the Tesla Cybertruck recently. Regardless, Ford hasn't yet disclosed what sort of plans it has for the roughly 750 workers currently stationed at the factory that produces these things. So, uh... Take that, Elon Musk. Well, that has aged like a glass of milk. Now look, Jim Farley is fairly honest. He's admitted in the past that they're learning from Tesla. Tesla's producing vehicles better, faster, cheaper, more profitably, blah, 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 blah. He's praised Elon Musk, given credit where it's due, but still. Bro, he was asking for trouble when he said this. Of course, the reason he said this was just to get publicity for the F-150 Lightning. I actually get it, right? He knows deep down that the Cybertruck was going to smoke the F-150, thought it'd have troubles. But by dropping Musk's name, he drew more attention to the product. So I get it. But ouch. Ford, who are losing many tens of thousands of dollars per electric F-150 Lightning sold, have so little order flow at the current prices in which, again, they are bleeding 60 plus thousand dollars per vehicle sold, 
that they're just taking a two month holiday uh, to stop producing them. You think Tesla's got to be pausing Cybertruck production due to lackluster demand? <laughs> no. Oh, by the way, Tesla did disclose in the most recent quarter Cybertruck is now profitable already, as opposed to the F 150 Lightning, which Ford doesn't break down by model. But it's got to be give or take $60 plus thousand dollars lost per Lightning sold based on their overall EV losses. So to recap, Cybertruck's already outselling the F-150 Lightning. It's already profitable, despite the F-150 Lightning having a massive head start, a couple of years probably. So yeah, in short, everything's fine. Ford's going to be fine. They have not fumbled a football here, and the fact that consumers aren't willing to pay what they're asking for their flagship electric vehicle, totally fine. Everything's going to be fine. Nothing to see here, except no, it's not fine. They're going to go bankrupt. Don't say I didn't warn you. Take that, Elon Musk. Want more content? Early access? bunch of perks click the links in the pinned comment ag1 is awesome i've been taking it daily now for more than three years it's a great way to fill in nutritional gaps it's packed full of vitamins minerals and whole food source nutrients plus has prebiotics probiotics and adaptogens to improve gut health regularity and help your body handle stress i'm always looking for an edge to help me feel and perform my best which is why i haven't missed a day of ag1 for more than three years just try it and see how you feel Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs. This is what viewers of the channel had to say after trying AG1. I feel like I have a lot more energy since I started on AG1. Just got my AG1 in the mail, legit feeling the effects after day three. Three months ago, I started AG1 and have been enjoying the evenness of alertness and energy that lasts the day. I just started the wife on it too. Are you convinced yet? I mean, hey, it's worth trying, right? Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR or I can keep going. This viewer after about a month on AG1, definitely a lack of fatigue in the afternoon. Pleasant side effect is that my coffee intake has imploded and is almost down to zero. One more. Yeah, why not? I honestly feel younger and will be continuing to use AG1. This stuff really is crazy good. I didn't think it would be, but this stuff is awesome. It really is what everyone is saying. One more. Don't mind if I do. I've just received my third month supply. I've drank it every day. I have so much energy throughout most of the day. I'm productive, started a new business, started socializing, refurbished a boat. It's no coincidence. Thank you for your persistence, your integrity, and your insights. Now look, these are not my words. These are not my testimonials. This is what you guys and girls are saying. Maybe it's 100% placebo effect. But even if that's the case, I think it's money well spent. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs.